Hey guys, Scott here from Alpha Nerd Tech. So the other day I put together a video on my Unraid system and transferring my Unraid system over to the Terramaster. Um, I've gotten a couple emails and a couple responses about exactly how I did it and what system files I changed and, and the bio setup. So today I'm just going to do a really quick video on the steps that I took to do this. Don't worry, I will get back to the questions. I will respond to the emails and I will uh, post some notes in the comments. Um, it just, I figured this was a lot easier since I've getting, I've only posted the video three days ago and I've had six different inquiries. So I figured I'd do this real quick just so it's, it's out there, everyone can see it. I know this pertains to the later generation Terra Masters. I don't know about the older ones. Um, I did see a video of, about you can just put your USB drive in and it boots right up. Uh, just by changing the BIOS setting to boot from that drive, it does not work on the later generation. It will hang up on the TerraMaster uh, boot screen, splash screen, and then you, it, it, you, it'll reboot itself. And that's what happened to me exactly. So this will just be a real quick uh, what I did and just a couple upgrades I've done since I did this a few days ago. All right, guys, so here we go. So this is where we left off in the last video, as far as hardware is concerned anyway. And, oh, come on out of there. Yeah, yeah. We are going to go ahead and, if you remember, I had the 16 gig that I put in. And I put the uh, one terabyte SSD that I had. So now I've got a second crucial DDR5 4800 I'm going to throw in. And we're going to snap this guy right into here. Make sure it's nice and tight and pop that down. And then I've also got the Crucial T500, two terabyte that I'm gonna throw in here in hopes to do some video editing off of. Um, in the next video, we're gonna be upgrading my system, my network system to a uh, 10 gig. So I can get 10 gig to the Mac mini, 10 gig to the Terramaster, since it has the dual 10 gig mix in it. And see how this thing does for video editing right off the NAS off of this 2 terabyte SSD. So there we go. That's it for the uh, upgrades on the inside. We'll go ahead and put the cover back on it. And we'll jump over to Unraid. And I'll go ahead and do a fresh boot of Unraid just so you can see from start to finish, exactly how I got everything to work. So anyway, um, be right back. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run over to Unraid website and get the download. So what you're going to do is download your creator. Now I'm using Mac, so I would download the USB creator from Mac and install it. I already did, so I'm not going to do that again. And then you're going to download the latest version of Unraid. And I downloaded, or whichever version you want, I downloaded 7.0. Um, I already have it downloaded, and I've got my USB loaded up in my drive. So now I'm going to come here to the USB Unraid creator that I installed. I'm going to choose the OS. And we're going to do 7.0. Maybe we're going to choose it. What I'm going to do is go to where I downloaded it. So I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go to my download. There are some bugs in this system that I've found a couple already. Um, and then I'm going to choose my storage media. And then I have just an 8 gig that I'm using for this test. And we'll go next. And I set this up to be, you can change, make your server name whatever you want. Um, I set this up to be uh, 192.168. I'm going to put this on my 11. No, I'll put it on my 63 network. And um, I'm just going to throw a number in here because I really don't. It, it's This is just a test. But anyway, um, I'll throw. I know what's something that's not used is one. Um, 60. 
is not used. And then I use the 255, 255, 255. I don't know why it doesn't populate some of this automatically. It'd be a little easier if it did. And then 192, 168. You really don't need to do this right now. You can always do this once you're in Unraid. But just to show you that for me, this did not work. And then we're on the 63 network here for this one. And uh, one is my DNS. Oh, that's not my DNS. That's my... Yeah, that's fine. It'll work. Um, continue. All existing data will be erased. So make sure your flash drive is the one you want to use, and it's going to erase it. We'll click yes. We'll go ahead and prepare this. And we'll be right back when it's done. And now we're 83%. Give it a few more minutes. We'll be right back. 95%. And we're almost done here. All right, there we go. So it's been written, we're good. If you'd like to enable legacy boot, which for the Terramaster, we do not enable legacy boot. We keep it on the UEIF or UFIE, yeah, something like that, anyway. And then we're gonna hit continue and that's it. So we're gonna close this out and we're gonna go ahead and put this into our NAS in the back. I'm gonna put it in the back, I'll leave the, uh, the TOS or whatever OS you have, it, I'll, I'll leave my version of Unraid in there, but I'll change the BIOS to boot. So let me just uh, set up the capture card real quick and we'll get in here and I'll show you what happens if we don't modify some files on the USB. All right, guys, so I've got the Terramaster plugged in to the capture card and we're going to boot this guy up. And basically, I just spam the delete button to get into the BIOS. And I hold it and spam it a few times, and it does take a minute. It does look like it's going to hang up here. But eventually, it will go into the BIOS. There we go. So now we're in the BIOS. And all I changed in here is the first thing I did, I left all this alone. I didn't touch anything here. I went over to the fast, and I disabled TOS. So boot TOS first, I disabled that. Quiet boot I left alone. I did also change this from power off to power on. So anytime we have a power outage or whatever it is, my uh, Terramaster will boot up automatically. And then I went over here to the boot section. And at the very bottom, you have your UEFI USB. This is where you select what boot disk you want. So I did boot option two. Um, actually, the boot option one is the uh, TOS. Boot option two is my verbatim drive. But since we're doing this test right here, I pulled out the other USB and we're gonna use this one here. So we're gonna change this to that one. So boot option number two. We're going to change boot option number one over to the new drive. There we go. So it'll boot to that one first before it tries to boot to my verbatim. And then we're going to exit here. Again, everything else at the top I left alone. Quiet boot is enabled. Fast boot is disabled. That's the way it was when it came. And now you can see here my boot option one is my new drive that we just created. So I'm going to hit F4 function on my keyboard and I'm going to save it yes and we're going to let it boot. So now here's the problem that most people and including myself was seeing is it'll come up to this screen right here and it will hang here and it won't go past here. So if you listen and you hear what's going on it is actually booting but it's booting to the Unraid selection screen that lets you select, do you want the user interface, the UI Unraid? Do you want the network Unraid or the options there? Um, I don't have a screen of that because right now we're stuck here. So, and it sticks right here and it won't get past here. Um, so what we got to do is make a small change in the system file 
so that when it boots up, it skips that screen and goes straight to the interface to the to the network uh, boot option, I guess that is. I, I'm not an Unraid expert. I watched a lot of videos to get it to work a year and a half ago, and it's just been working for me. So it'll stay here. It won't do anything. It might actually reboot a couple times on me. Um, that's that uh, UI going through its countdown and then restarting. So let's get over to the flash drive, and I'll show you exactly what I did. Guys, so here we go. So go ahead and open up your Finder or in Windows your File Explorer and scroll down to the Unraid flash drive. And in here, we're going to go to the SysLinux file. And then we're going to go into the SysLinux CFG. Let's open that up. Mine opens up in Word. You can open it up in, in text document or whatever you want. And this is everything. And I'll go ahead and make a screenshot of this. I mean, not a screenshot. I'll, I'll go ahead and copy this and put it in the, the notes below. But all we're going to do is change this default menu.c32. And we're going to change this to, say, Unraid OS. Space OS. So now once we do this, we'll save it. This will allow it to skip the menu because uh, right now it's going to prompt for a menu. And then it's going to make you select. Do you want the un Unraid OS? Do you want the GUI mode? Um, you want safe mode? You want GUI in safe mode? Or the memory test? So we're going to skip all that and just automatically go straight to the Unraid OS. And that'll get us past the TerraMaster um, Flash screen. So let's run back over to the TerraMaster and we'll let it fly. All right, guys, so I got the flash drive back in the TerraMaster and we're going to go ahead and hit the power button and we're going to try to boot this thing up. And here we go on the TerraMaster flash screen that it likes to lock up on. And we're just going to sit here and wait this out. By changing that, it should do, um, bypass the Unraid menu and go straight to booting up the Unraid OS. So let's just uh, give it a minute here. And I see my flash drive doing some flashing. And here we go. So now we are booting into Unraid. And let's let it get all booted up. And we should have an IP. All right, so there we go. So there's the, uh, this time it did work. So it, when I tried this um, from my backup, so I made a backup of my Unraid. And when I tried this before, it did not populate the IP address. It just gave me one off of it. It left it in DHCP. It didn't uh, give me the static. So I had to look down here and put this in my browser to be able to get into Unraid. So let's do that right now, and we will see what happens here in a second. All right, guys, so as you can see, I put in the IP address here, and we got up to the Unraid boot screen, and we cannot change the root, because that is our root password. And then we're going to, no, we're not gonna use that. We're gonna choose my own. And we're going to use our crazy secure password. And we're going to do that again. Oh, one too many. And here we go. We don't want to save that. Because this is just a temporary one. So anyway, here we are. Um, we're in Unraid. As you can see, we, it's asking us to start our trial or purchase a key or redeem your activation code if you already have it. But as you can see, everything booted up. It did work. Um, you can go to our dashboard and you can see the server. You can see that it's the uh, unregistered. It's the i5. So 
1235U. It's the same thing that's on my server. It's just you, you can see everything here now. So anyway, that's it. It works. Um, from here, you just set up Unraid like you normally would. Or you, uh, yeah, watch a lot of Space Invader 1's videos because he knows Unraid probably better than the Unraid people know Unraid. Um, anyway, yeah, that's how I learn all my stuff is through his videos. Um, the guy's amazing, and uh, yeah, I have no problems. But um, this should work for all the newer Terror, Terror Master um, with the ice i5s and the i3s and maybe even later but yeah that's the trick guys so i hope you enjoyed this and uh give me a thumbs up and a like and i'm not gonna throw a bunch of extra junk in this one um just yeah subscribe to the channel and watch my videos because uh it, it helps a lot have a great day guys